Hello, as I said, I will be following the sequences outlined in the book Yoga in Action by Gita Ji. So today we are going to take up the first week, which is the beginning. And we always start at the beginning and it has a series of 13 asanas. Of course, I will list them out for you in a PDF, which you can refer to later. And uh, this is the sequence. So I'm simply going to guide you through the poses and um, then you get familiar with the first week of the course. And then you can refer to the video and practice on your own through the week so that you can understand and get better at each of the postures. So without much ado, let us begin. We start with the invocation. So sit up in a comfortable seated position, use enough height, bring the fingertips alongside the body, pressing your fingertips, lift the side chair, shoulders back, and then slowly bring the palms of the hand resting at the center of your chest. Close your eyes. Take a deep, slow inhale. Oh. Oh. Yogena chitasya padena vacham Malam sharirasya chavaida kenam Yopa karotam pravaram muninam Patan jalim pran jaliranatosmi Abahu purushakaram Shankha chakra sidharinam Sahasra shirasam shvetam pranamami patanjalim harihi om. Now gently bow your head down, release the hands, place them back on your legs, lift your head up and open your eyes. Let's come up. We are going to start in Samastiti or Tarasan. So stand on the center of your mat. Join your big toes. Join your heels, your ankles. Take your attention to your shins. Bring them closer. Bring your thighs closer. Shift the weight to the heels. Lift the waistline. Take the outer shoulders back. Stretch your arms down. Stretch your wrists, stretch your fingers, look straight. Standing in Tarasan or Samastiti. From here, we will move to Urdhvahastasan. So extend your arms straight in front of you. Take your attention to your elbows, tighten your elbows, stretch your fingers. And with an inhalation, go ahead and stretch your arms up. As you stretch your arms up, use the arms, lengthen both sides of the waistline, keep your weight back on the heels, move your thighs back, hug your shins in, get the outer upper arms in and lift the sides of the body. See if you can keep your elbows tight and move the upper arms back. At the same time, watch the abdomen, keep the abdomen back, buttocks in, thighs close, shins close. Slowly bring your hands down. Badhanguliasan in Tarasan. So again, Take your right thumb on top of the left, interlace the hands, have a good clasp, turn the palms out, keep the fingers interlaced. If you find that's difficult, make sure you touch the thumbs and maintaining the clasp of the hands, straightening your upper arms with an inhalation, go ahead and stretch your arms. Again, lengthen the sides of the chest, shift your weight back into the heels, keep your thighs back, buttocks in and lift the sides of the chest. Take your upper arms back, elbows straight. Turn the thumb side up towards the ceiling, little finger side down towards the floor. Release, bring your hands down, change. 
Left thumb goes on top of the right, interlace the hands again, turn the palms out, keeping the thumbs close, upper arms tight, and with an inhalation, go ahead and stretch your arms up. Once more, stretch your armpits, roll the outer shoulders forward, elbows tight, work the upper arms back, keep your weight heavy on the heels, thighs back, stretch upward. See if you can keep your abdomen in, buttocks in, working the arms back behind your ears. Now slowly release, bring your hands down and bring your hands back on the sides of the chest, sides of the body. Take a couple of breaths, settle down, look straight. Next, we are going to do Namaskarasan. So bring the palms of the hand, you often see Namaskar. So here too, we bring the palms of the hand, but we make an extra effort to see, can you press the base of the palm, the middle of the palm, and really get all the fingers to touch each other well. Then you place the hands right here at the center of the chest. Instead of having the fingers pointing vertically up to the ceiling, you want it to slightly move forward. So it moves forward, it helps the shoulders. At the same time, keeping the thumb pressing into the chest, take your outer shoulders back and lengthen your upper arms down. So extend the upper arms down and press the hands equally. Try not to push with your force. Try to keep a kind of delicate, awareness of pressing the palms, the base, the middle, the fingers evenly, and lengthen the elbows down. Now we're going to see if we can keep this extension of the upper arms and then slowly release the hands. Continue lengthening your biceps as you extend your fingers down. Once more, move your forearms a little bit back, shoulders back, shift the weight to the thighs and stretch down, standing in Tarasan. Now relax. Take a couple of breaths. And now we are going to move on to Namaskarasan in Urdhvastasan. So let's see how that goes. So first, just as before, you stretch your arms up, Urdhvastasan, right? Now, once you've got that, you make sure if the outer arms are going out, you have to be a little conscious. Make sure your forearms are out. Draw the outer shoulders in. So we keep the sides of the body close to the spine. Reach up, reach up. Take your upper arms back. So your arms, can you not move from the thighs, thighs back, abdomen back? Stretch your upper arms back. And then once you've got that connection, see if you can bring first the base of the palms. If it's not happening, don't go any further. If your elbows are bending, you need to keep the arms extended. But if it's possible, you bring your base of the palms here, palm touching, and then extend up. Use this wherever you can see. I can feel one of my elbows slightly bending, so I have to roll that outer shoulder and keep extending and work on extending upwards. Look straight. Keep your weight on the heels, knees tight. And now release the hands and bring your hands down. Okay, so the next one, we move on to Uthita Hasta Padasan. It's a foundation of a standing pose. Perhaps nothing we really look at in a regular class, but it's worth revisiting in terms of just looking at how the structure of the pose is. So if you're jumping, then you bring your hands in, bend your knees and jump and spread your legs out. The distance between the feet, it should be around four feet wide or a little bit more if you're a taller person. Extend through the upper arms. Now stretch the chest. Your shoulders go down, your shoulder blades move in. The weight is on the heels, knees tight, elbows tight. Now keeping the chest facing forward, simply turn your right foot, right knee, right thigh. But see that your chest is facing forward. Now turn your right foot back and let's turn the left side. You have to keep the upper body still. Try not to move everything as you turn your leg. You want to keep the head straight, chest straight, hips facing forward. Only turn your left foot, knee, thigh and hip and try not to disturb the rest of the body. Be even on the heels. This pose is called Udita Hasta Parshvapadasan because the 
whole foot has turned to the side. Now turn your toes in. And now once more bend your knees, jump your legs and come back to the center. Stand with your big toes close, shift your awareness to the heels, lift the side chest, upper arms long, look straight. Recover for a few moments. Soft, smooth inhale and soft, smooth exhale. Next, we go for Uthita Trikonasan. So bring your hands in the center one more time, bend your knees, jump and spread your legs out. Have a quick look to see your toes are in line. Spread the chest, move the shoulder blades in, tighten your upper arms. Now turn your right foot, right knee, right thigh completely. Turn your left toes slightly in. You have to turn your left toes a little bit in, but at the same time, hip facing forward, chest facing forward. Keeping the weight heavy on the back leg, elongating the right side of the chest, go down. Place your hand close to your shin bone. Take your left hand on the hip for a moment. Keep your left hip back, left thigh goes back. Turn from the right abdomen to the left, right side of the chest to the left, and take your left shoulder back. Keep your head looking straight. Once the left shoulder has gone back, if you can go down more, you can, but then stretch the arm from the back of the body. The shoulder blade stays in, tighten your tricep and lift the chest from the center. Straight arms. Now use the top arm, inhale and come up. Turn your toes in again. Pause, take a breath. If you're very tired, you can bring your hands on the hip or you can work them out by stretching them. Turn your left foot, left knee, left thigh. Turn your right toes slightly in. Keep your hip facing forward, chest facing forward. Lift both sides of the chest as you stamp the outer edge of your right leg, elongating the left side of the torso, go down. Once you have the hands, keeping your left shoulder back, bring your right hand on the hip. It helps, so you want to feel that your whole left hip turns to the right. Your left waistline turns to the right. The left armpit chest turns to the right. Take your right shoulder back, elbow back. Now maintaining the shoulder blade in, reach your left arm up. Look straight, lift the right side of the chest up into the right arm. Keep your left arm firm, your right thigh back weight on the heel. Now use the top arm, your right arm lifts you up as you come up. Now turn your toes in, jump your legs, and come back to Tarasan. Pause here for a few moments, rolling the shoulders back, elbows straight, smooth, steady inhale, and smooth, steady exhale. Now we are going to go for Pashvuttanasan, but keeping the back in a concave shape. So let's once more jump. So we bring our hands in the center, bend your knees, jump and spread your legs out. Here you can shorten your distance a little bit, but around three and a half feet, see that your toes are in line. Now bring your hands on the hip or your waistline. See that you're lifting the side chest, shoulders go back, elbows come close. Now, turning your right foot again, right knee, your thigh, so the whole thigh, knee, foot in one line. Here we do turn the back foot as well. So this time you turn your left toes more. So before it was just a 30 degree kind of turn, and now I turn it more to a 60 degree. At the same time, keep your weight on the heel and you start turning from the back of the thigh so the hip begins to turn. Not only does your left hip come forward, your right hip has to go back. Be firm on the back leg. Now turn from the waistline. So here you turn your left side to the right, the left armpit to the right. Take your attention to the tailbone. Move it in, lift the abdomen, lift the chest, take your head back, bring your elbows close. Your head moves back, you look up, chest up. Be heavy on both your legs, legs straight, Press your right heel, left heel. Now look straight again, returning your head back to neutral and turning your chest, facing forward. Relax your hands for a moment. 
see that your feet are in line. And we do Parshvottanasana, concave back, upright position on the left side. So bring your hands on the waist, lift the side chest, shoulders back, elbows close. Maintaining the lift and length of your spine, move the buttock in, lift the abdomen up, chest up, sternum up. Now going towards the left. So turn your left foot, your knee, your thigh completely. Now turn your right toes 60 degrees in. At the same time, keep the weight on the right heel. Start turning from the back of your right thigh. Turn your right hip, left hip. As you're staying in the pose, again, move the tailbone forward. Lift the abdomen up, chest up, sternum up. Bring your elbows close. Move the shoulder blades into the back and look up. Be heavy on both your legs, legs straight. Turn your right hip forward, left hip back. Now return your head to look straight and then turn your chest around. Get your feet two points straight. Since we did the jump, we're going to bend the knees, jump and come back to the center. Once more, shift your weight to the heels, lift the side chest, take the outer shoulders back, elbows tight, extending through the fingers. Now for the next pose, here we take our hands down. You can take two blocks and keep it on your right side. So we take two blocks now and we keep it on our right side. Stand in the center again. Bring your hands in the center, bend your knees, jump and spread your legs out. Let's start by bringing our hands on the hip. Turn your left fo right foot, right knee, right thigh completely. Turn your left toes more in. Now keep the weight heavy on the heel. Start to turn from the back of the thigh, turning your hip, turning your chest. Now let's reach our arms up like we did in Urdhastasan. Again, take your tailbone forward, lift the pubic bone, lift the chest, lift the arms. Be firm on the back leg. Keep pressing into the back leg as you reach forward until your chest is parallel to the floor. Then you take your hands down, bring your blocks so they're directly underneath the shoulders. Press your hands. Tighten your upper arms, shoulders go back. Move your right hip back, your left hip forward. Straighten your legs and stretch from the belly forward, ribs forward, chest forward and look up. We want the back to move in. We want to keep the weight heavy on the heels. Now to come up, you can bring your hands on the hip, press into the legs, inhale and come up. Now let's move the blocks to the other side. So once more, come back into standing. Take a moment to stand. Back in Tarasan, joining your feet, shifting the weight to the heels, rolling the outer shoulders, elbows straight. Bring your hands to the center, bend your knees, jump. Bring your hands on the hip, lift the side chest, shoulders back. Turn your left foot, Left knee, left thigh. Turn your right toes more in. Press the outer edge of the right heel. Start to turn from the back of your thigh. Turn your right hip forward, left hip back, chest forward. Now reach your arms up. Lift and lengthen the sides of the body. Keep the weight on the heel as you start to turn. Again, move the tailbone in, pubic bone up, chest up, head back, and keeping the head back. Don't let the head go forward. Reach with the arms, lengthen both sides of the torso. Now place your hands. Again, bring your blocks so they're directly underneath the shoulders. You have to press your hands strong, lift your chest up. Shoulders go back, draw the left hip into the midline. The left hip tends to shorten. Pull it back so that it goes to the right. And that way you can shift the weight to the right heel. Now keeping the spine lengthening forward, pressing the hands. The belly comes forward, the sternum comes forward, the head comes forward. Shoulders stay back, shoulder blades in. Now keeping the weight heavy on the back leg, bring your hands on the hip, press into the legs, inhale and come up. Now you can slightly move your blocks forward, turn your toes in and jump. 
and bring your legs back, standing in Tarasana. Next, we go for Prasarita Padottanasana. So once more, you can keep your blocks ready. You might need them, you might not. And if you do, then this is the position for them. So if you're more tight and you know that going forward for you is a, a little challenging because maybe you have tighter hamstrings or a sensitive lower back, then you're best off keeping two blocks ready in front of you. And so that way you don't overwork your back and especially a forward bend and we must take care when we practice. Bring your hands in the center again, bend your knees, jump and spread your legs out. See that you're stretching from the center of the chest, keep the weight heavy on the heels, spread the arms. Now once more, bring your hands on the hips, lift the abdomen, lift from the pubic bone up, lift from the sternum up, roll the shoulders back, stamp the outer edges of the feet, be firm on the legs, the Tarasan legs, keeping the thighs back, keeping the hip moving forward, chest moving forward. Press the outer edges of the heels as you come down. Once you come down, if you can touch the floor, just move the blocks out so you can see, then you stay here. But if you find you're rounding your back, then you need blocks in such a way so that you're able to lift your chest up and your front part of the spine is not compressing. There is another video where I've explained exactly how the chest should look, but for now, press your hands, upper arms rotating, shoulders back, and lengthen the abdomen, lengthen the chest, again, concave back. We work on our legs here, watch your inner knees, move them back, press the outer edges of the heels, draw the thighs into the hip. Look straight, arms straight, thighs tight, press into the heels. And now from here, looking forward, bring your hands on the hip. Actually wait, you keep your hands there to come out. It's much safer if you bring your feet a little bit in, bring your hands on the hip, press into the legs and come up. Now you can simply join your feet and come into a base position. So that ends more or less our standing poses. I know you've been on your feet for a while, and if you're a beginner, this might be quite a lot. If you are a practitioner and you're just revisiting these poses, I hope you found some new insights which will help you to, again, further develop in your Iyengar yoga practice. So I'm going to, we are moving into the seated poses. So we will use a blanket. So I have a blanket and we are going to start with Dandasan. You also will need a belt. Where's my belt? Yes, here. So we have the belt. So you're going to sit facing forward. Use as much height as needed, especially if you have any sensitive lower back issues, then you need to sit higher. Anytime you feel your, your sacrum is dropping, it is much better. I just want to show you before we continue that you'd raise the height so that when you sit, you're able to keep your legs straight and you're able to lift the sacrum up and move it in rather than letting it drop back. So once you've taken the right height, move, place your hands underneath the buttocks, move the flesh back, press the sitting bones down, have your legs straight in front of you. We are starting in Dandasan. Toes are pointing up, hug your outer legs in, Push the knees down towards the floor and keep your legs straight. So straight legs, knees tight, thighs tight. As you descend your thighs down, lift your pelvis up, use your hands to press into the support, lift your waistline, lift your chest. Again, move the sacrum in, move the back ribs in, shoulders back, chest up, head looking straight. Dandasan. Legs tight. Toes up, thighs down. Next, we are going to look at Urdhva Hastasan Dandasan. In the same way, Urdhva Hastasan we did in Samastiti. So stretch your arms straight in front of you. Again, lengthen the arms, elbows tight, and with an inhalation, go ahead and lift your arms up. 
Press the thighs down, keep your toes pointing up, press the knees down, thighs down, lift your waistline, lift your chest, lift your upper arms, and see if you can take your arms behind your ears, chest up. At the same time, you have to see that you don't puff your abdomen forward. Keep it drawn back and lifted upward. Move the shoulder blades in as you move your upper arms back. Stretch up. Now release. Bring your hands down. Next, we go for Padangushtasana Dandasan. So Padangushtasana would be grabbing your toes, but at the same time, it's easier if you use a belt. So you will keep a belt handy and place it close to your feet, keeping your legs in Dandasan, pushing your thighs down, lift and stretch your arms up, Lift the chest, lift the waistline, and go forward. Then maintain that as you reach your hands. Since this is not about really going forward yet, we want to grow, uh, grow tall from the spine. So use your arms, hold the belt tight, tighten your elbow, and lift the sides of the chest, which is here. So the arms are helping you to lift the side chest up and away from the pelvis. Keep descending your knees down, toes pointing up, pressing the thighs, looking straight. Same thing, the sacrum moves in, the back ribs move in, the sternum lifts, and you look straight. Draw the shoulders down. Tighten your upper arms. Toes pointing up, knees pressing down. Now release. Now we go forward for a little bit of Paschimottanasana. However, if you have any back issue, it's best if you stay more upright in Dandasan. If you don't have any back issue, you've been practicing anger yoga for a while, then you can go forward a little bit, paying attention to the key points of what to keep lifted. So you can keep your belt handy one more time, sitting in Dandasan, reach your arms up, lift up, stretch up, and from the hip, the movement starts from the hip. If your abdomen is shrinking, you might have to go just still there and just be patient. And as you practice, your spine will open and it will be easier, but it's better to be safer than to overwork. If you're able to go forward, if you're able to push the thighs, lift the front ribs up and then go forward from the hip as far as possible. When you feel you've reached your limit, you simply drop your head keeping the back of the head and the shoulders in line. If you can go forward more, then press your thighs, lift your elbows and lengthen the abdomen, chest. Look forward. Try not to drop your head below the shoulders in this manner. It again compresses this whole spine. We want to keep the elbows up, the abdomen up, the sternum up, the head up, the front body long, thighs very important. Keep your legs firm. And then from here, straighten yourself up again. And then bring your hands back and come up. So for today, that would be all. And then we are going to go for our Shavasana. So you can take the belt away. And you can always revisit this video. You can repeat it a few times because then you can understand the poses. And if you practice the whole week, then you'll find at the end of the week, you kind of know the pose and maybe even your movement, your ability to move forward in certain poses has improved. But it all depends on you practicing. So I leave this up to you. But for now, it is Shavasana time. So you're going to set yourself up it's nice sometimes to use an extra blanket. So I'll show you how I move all these other blankets out. You can fold your blanket in half. So you have a nice support for your head, like a pillow. And you sit on the center of your mat. See that you're evenly positioned. Use your elbows to slowly release yourself down. Lengthen the sacrum. When you lower yourself down, lift your head up, lengthening the head. And again, note that I'm placing the blanket just till my shoulders, just to, for my neck. And then I roll the outer shoulders down and then extending the tailbone, slowly release the legs one at a time. 
Have a quick look to see your feet are evenly released out to the side. Once more, lift the side chest. See that your head is not tilted to one side. Yes, it's important to take care even in Shavasana. And then you can slowly, softly close your eyes and be there. Let go of the arms, let go of the legs. Soften your abdomen. Relax your facial muscles, your throat, your jaw, and completely letting go. Now slowly, for today we are going to come up, so you can softly begin to open your eyes, looking around in your room, bend your right leg, your left leg, bring your right hand, your left hand on your abdomen, and even how we come up is important, so you can stretch your right arm long again in line with your shoulder, and as you start to roll yourself to the right side, roll over, and when you bend your right arm, your head can rest on your right upper arm and forearm. Stay there quiet for a few moments. And then you can use your left hand. You press into the floor, looking down with an inhalation. Slowly come up. And then let's for a moment bring our hands at the center of the chest. Smooth inhale, smooth exhale. Thank you for being here, attending the class. I hope it is of benefit to you. Namaste.